The People's Liberation Army Air Force released a video that Western analysts couldn't ignore. On November 11, 2025, during the PLA Air Force's 76th anniversary, footage emerged showing China's J-16 fighter jet in operational configurations few had seen before. Not promotional clips, but footage showing manned-unmanned teaming, electronic warfare variants, and long-range strike capabilities that redefined regional power calculations. The silhouette climbing through clouds wasn't just another flanker copy. It was China announcing it no longer asks permission to dominate its airspace. And what that video revealed left Pentagon planners recalculating every scenario for the Western Pacific. Before we understand what made this release significant, we need to grasp what the J-16 represents. This two-seat, multi-role strike aircraft emerged from Russia's shadow to become a genuine threat. While headlines focus on the stealthy J-20, the J-16 has quietly become the PLA Air Force's workhorse. Produced in numbers exceeding 200 aircraft, and continuously deployed near Taiwan and the South China Sea. It carries some of the most advanced air-to-air -air missiles in the world, the PL-15 with over 200 kilometers range and the PL-17 reaching potentially 400 kilometers. That means it can threaten tankers, AWACS aircraft, and command planes far behind front lines. The November 2025 AVI-5 video showed network-centric warfare capabilities, electronic attack systems, and AI-assisted operations that mirror American concepts, but deployed at scale. Tensions in the Taiwan Strait remain elevated, and every J-16 sortie collects data that narrows the experience gap with Western Air Forces. Origin story, two minutes. At the end of the 1990s, China faced a critical air power problem. Western embargoes had frozen access to modern fighter technology. Compared to US F-15s and F-16s, China's fighter fleet was rapidly becoming obsolete. Beijing turned to economically troubled Russia, first purchasing Su-27 flankers, then the Su-30MKK, a long-range multi-role strike variant that represented an entirely new capability. The J-11A program allowed China to license produce the Su-27, but production issues and limited technology transfer made it clear that buying foreign aircraft would never be enough. China needed to forge its own path. This realization triggered a fundamental shift in defense industry philosophy. China was evolving from customer to developer, and that transformation would reshape Pacific power dynamics. The unlicensed J-11B marked the first serious step toward independence. Russian systems were replaced with Chinese-developed radars, avionics, and engines. That accumulated experience reached its peak with the J-16. The new fighter adopted the two-seat strike configuration of the Su-30 MKK, but the airframe and every internal system were entirely Chinese. From radar to engines, from cockpit displays to missile integration, everything was developed by Chinese engineers. The J-16 passed flight tests quickly and entered service in the early 2010s. China now possessed a modern multi-role fighter produced domestically without foreign permission. China had evolved from technology recipient into direct competitor to Russia. A new reality had emerged. China was now shaping the flanker legacy it once followed. Before we continue, if military technology and the future of air combat fascinate you, type SHIELD in the comments below and hit that subscribe button. The J-16's airframe is based on the Su-27 flanker design, but Chinese engineers reshaped it fundamentally. Extensive use of composite materials made the aircraft lighter and decreased its radar signature, making it harder to detect. But the real revolution lies in the engines. China's domestically developed WS-10B Taihang engines initially experienced serious reliability issues. 
Foreign observers predicted China would remain dependent on Russian engines for decades. Those predictions proved wrong. The WS-10B improved dramatically, now producing around 135 kilonewtons of thrust each, powering the J-16 as standard equipment. Consider this. A country that could not produce a reliable high-performance jet engine 20 years ago now builds aircraft capable of Mach 2 using entirely indigenous power plants. This is a declaration of strategic independence. China no longer needs Russian approval to sustain its fighter fleet. The twin WS-10B engines give the J-16 impressive performance. Combat radius extends beyond 1,500 kilometers with external fuel tanks. The aircraft can carry up to 12,000 kilograms of munitions across 12 external hardpoints. This versatility makes the J-16 valuable across the full spectrum of air operations. The J-16 is intelligent, packed with sensors that would have been impossible for China to produce a generation ago. At its heart lies a domestically produced AESA radar capable of tracking multiple targets simultaneously while resisting enemy jamming. The glass cockpit features large displays providing customizable information. The helmet-mounted display allows pilots to lock onto targets simply by looking at them. This look-and-shoot capability transforms dogfighting. The IRST system detects enemy aircraft through heat signatures without emitting radar waves, enabling the aircraft to see without being seen. At close range, the PL-10 short-range missile can lock onto targets up to 90 degrees off bore sight. But the true threat comes from farther away. The PL-15 missile has a range exceeding 200 kilometers and contains a miniature AESA radar allowing it to locate and strike targets independently. This outranges the AM-120D AMRAAM, backbone of U.S. air-to-air -air capability. The PL-15 poses a major threat to tankers and AWACS aircraft, the central nervous system of air operations. The PL-17, with estimated range up to 400 kilometers, offers engagement capability beyond visual or even radar range. With these missiles, China aims to collapse the enemy's entire air command structure. One of the most dangerous variants is the J-16D, China's first dedicated electronic warfare aircraft. Similar to the US EA-18G Growler, this specialized version trades kinetic firepower for the ability to dominate the electromagnetic spectrum. The cannon and IRST were removed and replaced with jamming pods and antennas on the wings and fuselage. These systems can jam or disable enemy radars, communication networks, and sensors. Modern air defense systems rely on radar to detect and engage targets. Jam those radars effectively, and you've rendered billion-dollar systems useless. But the J-16D doesn't just jam, Armed with YJ-91 anti-radiation missiles, it can physically destroy radar emitters. When an enemy radar activates, the J-16D detects emissions and guides missiles directly to the source. The radar operator faces an impossible choice. Keep the radar on, but risk destruction, or shut down and leave defended assets blind. This fits perfectly into China's modern military doctrine emphasizing systems warfare. Victory comes from collapsing the enemy's entire combat system by destroying or degrading sensors, communications, and command elements. In a potential Taiwan conflict, J-16D aircraft would likely launch first, suppressing defenses to create corridors for strike aircraft. The J-16 plays a crucial role in transforming China's air force into an offensive regional power. J-16s regularly approach Taiwan's air defense identification zone, conducting what China calls realistic combat drills. These flights collect electronic intelligence, mapping Taiwan's radar coverage, response times, and defensive patterns. Every time Taiwan scrambles fighters, the J-16's sensors record everything. These operations test Taiwan's defenses in real time, 
and provide realistic training for Chinese pilots under genuine tension. The involvement of J-16D electronic warfare variants indicates these missions simulate actual combat operations. In the South China Sea, J-16 operations involve aggressive intercepts against U.S. and Australian surveillance aircraft. These aren't rogue pilots. These are sanctioned operations designed to demonstrate sovereignty claims and train pilots under realistic operational tension. These operations act as a laboratory for air combat. The gap between PLA capabilities and Western Air Forces narrows with every operation. Modern Chinese military strategy treats aircraft as interconnected nodes in a comprehensive combat system. The most dangerous example is joint operations between the J-20 and J-16. The stealthy J-20 penetrates forward into contested airspace and identifies high-value targets. Rather than engaging itself, the J-20 transmits targeting data via secure data link to J-16s orbiting farther back. The J-16s, armed with long-range PL-15 and PL-17 missiles, launch weapons based on targeting data provided by the J-20. The J-20 maintains its stealth throughout because it hasn't fired weapons or conducted high-power emissions. This reflects China's intelligent warfare doctrine, combining network-centric operations, AI-assisted decision-making, and seamless data sharing. The November 2025 PLA Air Force video explicitly showed this manned-unmanned teaming concept. Footage depicted GJ-11 stealth drones operating in formation with J-20s and J-16s. In the future, the rear seat may evolve into an air mission command center capable of controlling multiple drones simultaneously. Some reports claim experimental flights have included AI occupying the second seat. Subscribe now because the strategic implications of the J-16 reveal why the Pentagon is watching China's Air Force more closely than ever before. The J-16 is a tangible symbol of China's military transformation. Although it resembles a flanker from outside, the systems inside represent a different generation. Domestic engines, AESA radar, electronic warfare capabilities, and AI-assisted operations. For the United States and allies, the J-16's proliferation creates serious operational challenges. U.S. air operations rely on enablers like tankers and AWACS aircraft that extend fighter range and provide command and control. These large, non-stealthy aircraft have operated under the assumption that friendly fighters would keep enemy interceptors away. The PL-15 and PL-17 missiles shatter that assumption. Now, critical enablers face direct threats from missiles that can reach them hundreds of kilometers from contested airspace. For Taiwan specifically, the J-16 represents an existential threat. Taiwan has roughly 400 combat aircraft total. China has more than 1,500, with several hundred being modern fourth-generation-plus aircraft like the J-16. In sustained conflict, Taiwan cannot match Chinese sortie generation rates. Regional responses are materializing. Japan has accelerated F-35 procurement. Australia is investing in long-range strike capabilities. The U.S. is developing the AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile specifically to counter threats like the PL-15. The single most important takeaway is this. China has completed its transformation from technology recipient to technology developer, and the balance of air power in the Indo-Pacific has fundamentally shifted. The November 2025 I5 video wasn't just propaganda. It was a signal that China now possesses the technology, industrial capacity, and operational experience to challenge Western air dominance. Do you think the United States and its allies can maintain their technological edge? Or has China already achieved parity in critical areas? Let me know in the comments below. If you want to stay informed about military technology developments, hit that subscribe button.
Next video examines the J-35, China's newest stealth fighter designed for carrier operations. You won't want to miss it.